friends. Oh, and hello and welcome to today's video, or at least one of, one of the videos now. This is going to be something new. It's going to be a little bit of a longer series of videos, because we have uh, the Airships Conquer the Skies tournament. The Airships Conquer the Skies is a game made by Sarkonnen or David Stark in Switzerland, I think. Yeah, it's a great game, I think. However, we have the tournament here, and we have uh, Call of Duty versus Ryun, or Ryune. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. However, let's take a look at the ships, starting from the left. We have a big saw ship. Well, it's not that big, actually. It has a saw. It has some lift that keeps it afloat. Some uh, grenadiers for boarding. And a propeller. It should be pretty helpful, though it needs to get pretty close. Next up, we have... Uh, a sail ship with some grenades, basically a, a cheap bomber. It can function if the sail gets shot off, or if the backside gets shot off, because it has bo two cockpits in, uh, in both sections. Pretty good, pretty good. Then we have a flamethrower ship, big flamethrower, big lift, big propeller, some marines, I think, and the command center. And then this one doesn't fun won't function if the command center gets shot off. But I think that's not important with this one. If it's uh, immobile, it's immobile. <laughs> then we have a bomber with a crow's nest. Interesting choice there. Bombers are pretty inaccurate nowadays. They have been nerfed. It also has two cockpits. Basically a cheap alternative to a bridge. A bit worse, but uh, cheaper. Three bombing base, a normal sail. Good lift, should, should be able to do a lot, do a lot. Uh, yeah, I just repeated myself, I'm sorry. Below that, we have two of the same ships. They have a deck gun that can shoot almost in a 90-degree 90, 90 uh, angle upwards. We have three cannons. They are pretty good against anything, basically. And then we have two rockets, which are also good against almost everything. Especially against light ships like steel, wall, wood armor. Uh, the special thing about this one is I think it's pretty resilient, because if you can shoot off the top, the bottom is still going to function because of the it's almost mirrored almost though because the bottom normally only has a cockpit instead of a bridge there's another one of those behind it then we have a suspendium sniper which is basically the swiss jaeger of this game uh, yeah it's very accurate it's very strong as well it needs a lot to reload it a long time rather it's also quite expensive to shoot to be honest but it's pretty good it's pretty good not a lot of command time, but it won't do a lot either. Just gonna stay in the back and pepper down the enemy. Below that we have a little carrier, two bombers, one biplane for anti-bomber warfare. Pretty minimalistic, I like it. Then we have a little walker. This walker is a, a multi, pretty much a multi-role walker. It has a big cannon and a small cannon, with turrets rather. They can shoot upwards. They are very strong as well, and if a coal deposit gets shot off, it can act as a building. Or if it's not shot off, it can uh, shoot under low-flying ships, or land ships as well. And the bottom, uh, both sides can function if one gets shot off. And then we have two little walkers with two flat guns. They can shoot upwards, as you might expect. <coughs> uh, pardon me. Um, they, they mostly have steel wall, uh, steel armor, I mean, so they are going to be pretty ro robust for their low cost and pretty good. We have a little wall here. I think this wall could have done with weaker armor as well, but it's still good enough. It's going to uh, deny lower flying ships any access or land ships as well. They would have to run through the wall, which would take a long time and might immobilize a few ships during that because the, the tower is just going to fall on top of them. On the right side we have two identical ships, they are quite big, and uh, they have a big cannon and a small cannon, a few Gatling guns here, and on the back as well. Mm. They also have a telescope and a cross net which is going to increase the accuracy by a lot. They have a lot of lift, though they are only lightly armored, so I think that's a bit overkill maybe. They have two bridges with it, which is definitely overkill in my opinion. But uh, we'll see, maybe that's exactly what he's aiming on, on a very quick doctrine, on a swift doctrine, so he can 
push the advantage of being just faster and overall. Behind that, we have a sponsorship, ship, three sponsors, one Gatling gun. Also very accurate with, with the telescope and a crow's nest. Though this one is not as strong as the one, other ones because the sponsors are not as good at, punch, at punching through armor than the cannon and the heavy cannon. And this one has quite a bit of lift as well, but it's also only lightly armored. Below that we have another carrier, though this one is way, way less minimalistic. It's very fancy actually. Um, it has big sponsons. These are better at punching through armor than the small sponsons, though this also has one small sponson. It also has Gatling guns and the front front turret, which as I mentioned is a very strong gun actually, very versatile. Also has a flag gun in case something flies above it, or just for anti-bomber warfare. The engine for it is hidden behind a sail and, and behind something else, which, which I don't know what it is. Anyway, with that assessed, we can now start the game in uh, 3, 2, 1, now. And immediately we see that the flamethrower ship is flying right into another ship of Ryun. The Gatling guns actually proving to be quite helpful here. They can shoot the saw ship, and the saw ship bumps right into the carrier. It's boarding the carrier. The carrier has some guards, but I think there won't be a big problem here. In the meantime, the big ships are getting into quite a pickle. They are getting peppered by the flagships. Because of their low armor, they aren't really posing any opposition to that. One of the big ships is but a mere skeleton anymore. The other one is still going, but not for long because they kind of just exploded. The little bumble from Call of It has bitten the dust because its uh, suspendium dust balloons have been shot down. The flamethrower ship, funnily enough, is still going with one small suspendium chamber. So I think that might be over now. Both of your Reun's big ships have been shot down. One is completely destroyed. The sponsor ship is pretty much dead as well. Only the carrier is really fighting on. But not for long, I think, because it's getting shot down by the... Uh, well, not, it's already down. It's just getting uh, shot to bits by the suspendium cannons. Because it just can't compete at this range. It's too inaccurate. And the suspendium uh, cannons are go going to hit almost every shot. There's one bomber of Reun left, it's trying to take out the suspendium cannon. It doesn't seem like it's too successful. Well, it shot it down, <laughs> that's for sure. But I think at this point it's pretty much game over. The carrier just doesn't have the necessary armament to take on anything right, right now. The bomber might win if the carrier um, holds up for long enough, but I think that's not going to be the case. I think we can just fall fast forward in 3, 2, 1, and now. Because at this point, there's not a lot going to happen anyway anymore. I think next time we should only go on to 2 times speed, because this is actually like a yard. But it's fine for now. Since this battle is over anyway. And there we go. Call of it has won. All of Ryun's ships have been completely destroyed. And only one, two, three, four, five of Colour's ships have been anything remotely disabled. One even has been destroyed. That's the bomber, I think. However, this is this. 
this game, this battle, and that's over now. So uh, we move on to the next one. But thank you for watching this one. I hope you were interested for new ones. And see you in the next one. Well, hello and welcome for this next battle. This is Call of Fruit versus Reun, the second battle. Call of Fruit is on the left side, Reun on the right side. And uh, let's look at the ships. I think we all know, I uh, remember these ships from the last battle. So I won't go into detail, into detail from the one that we already saw. We have the source ship again. We have the little grenade bomber again. The old flamethrower ship, the big, the, the, the little bomber. One of the reliant uh, reliable, uh, reliable and uh, resilient ships. We have the war. We have three of the little flagships now. Oh, flag walkers rather. And this one is new though. We have a little rocket ship with four rockets. It's interestingly built. I like the shape a lot. It has uh, some fire extinguishers, a good ammo bay, uh, a quarter. It has only got a single cockpit. Well, it's artillery anyway, so it won't really do a lot apart from staying back. I like this design a lot. And we have the carrier again, we have the suspendium sniper, we have the funny walker again. And on the Reun side, we, we know every ship. We have, we have again, two of the big ones. We have the sponsor ship again, and we have the carrier again. I'm not really sure, but are these the only ships that he got? I don't know, but let's start the game in 3, 2, 1, now. This time the battle is a bit put a bit different, with the carrier being up front and the, and the big ships being uh, right above each other. The saw ship actually killed its own propeller by charging into the... Uh, into the carrier, but well, I think it's a it's a sacrifice that had that had to be made. Grenade bomber down. One of the big ships has been captured, which is uh, not helpful because it's pretty much dead anyway. The sponsor ship is still working. The second big ship has uh, lost most of its body. Still shooting though with that big cannon. The flamethrower ship from Color of It has been shot down, which is okay, it, it did its job. I think this time the wall is actually pretty helpful because the sponsor ship can't close in and do any kind of kamikaze attack. The biplane got shot down. Was trying to harass the the leftovers of the of the of the second big ship. The bomber is still going because it's got steel armor. It's a little bit more resilient against the uh, flag fire. Well, not steel armor, steel wall rather. The carrier is trying to close in and shoot with its Gatling guns, sponsons, and uh, front turrets. It's getting shot shot to pieces by the by the suspendium cannons, bombs, and rockets. Though, even though steel armor is pretty good against rockets, they can still easily beat it if they just uh, hit close to the same spot over and over again. Though flak flak is something else because flak is actually not going to damage steel armor, at least not very well. The second big ship from the Yoon has been shot down. Call of its little uh, deck gun and resilient fighter has been turned into a, into a rudimentary building. Something just exploded, but I'm not sure what. 
Ah, it was the balloons of the Suspendium Sniper. Not really necessary because everything from a unit is being shot down anyway. Let's fast forward in 3, 2, 1, now. There we go. And again, Call of Duty has won this time with only two losses that have, that have, that have only been immobilized. And uh, this time, only one of Ryun's ships got completely destroyed. I think that's the sponsorship. But I'm not sure about that. Thank you for watching. Hope you're gonna be excited for the next ones, just as I am. And uh, see you then.